Again, thanks for having me. This topic is going to be about low-dose naltrexone for dry eye disease. When I first introduced this into ophthalmology in 2008, people didn't understand it. I worked on it for several years, and then I uh, came out with a paper in 2013. I presented this at the ISOPT uh, meeting in Paris in 2013. I don't think a lot of people uh, understood it back then either, but now there's a lot of science and just recently a paper was uh, published by one of the group uh, that was at this uh, ISOP meeting and heard me present in 2013. So I've got a lot of experiencing, experience losing low-dose naltrexone, LDN, and so I'm going to give you a kind of a review and also tell you how you can incorporate it into your clinic. So what is naltrexone? Let's just take naltrexone normally. It's, it's uh, been out there since the uh, early 80s. It got FDA approved in 85. So 50 to 100 milligrams was used as an opioid antagonist. It blocks the abilities, uh, ability for opioids to bind to receptors. So it's a great drug to get patients who are addicted to opioids uh, off them uh, because uh, they can take the opioid and it's not going to have uh, any effect uh, on them uh, when you uh, add naltrexone. So there was one doctor, Dr. Bahari, that was using it uh, in this way, but he realized that there was an anti-inflammatory effect, a, an effect on decreasing pain, and also uh, uh, effect of a little bit of uh, euphoria. And he started using it on AIDS patients and then um, presented his use of actually low-dose naltrexone uh, on these patients. So he realized by trying 50 milligrams, 20 milligrams, 5, 3.51, um, that in very low doses, you could get all of these great effects of anti-inflammation, uh, euphoria, uh, decrease in depression, uh, and decrease in pain uh, with very uh, low doses. Uh, and this will be important later on when we talk about dosing. He found that at around three milligrams was uh, uh, the best dosing for these patients uh, that he had. And then when you got into real low doses, like one milligram, 1.5, it really didn't uh, do much. So this was FDA approved in 84. He started using it in, uh, for boosting immunity. Then uh, LDN was used uh, for MS. And Dr. Gironi uh, published his paper of his use of MS. That's when I first heard about it. I also heard about it in the anti-aging uh, community. So I had a bunch of patients with dry eye disease that I was helping their meibomian gland dysfunction with intense pulse light, but they still had severe pain. And we, we know now that long-standing inflammation will cause uh, abnormalities in the corneal nerves, make them very super sensitive, and these patients experience uh, extreme pain. And then you have LASIK patients who, um, in a dry eye environment, these nerves never regrow back uh, normally, and then these patients have pain. So at the same time that I was developing platelet-rich plasma with nerve growth factor, uh, to try to rehabilitate these nerves, I was still looking for oral medications that could decrease the pain uh, for these patients. So at the time, I was trying all sorts of oral medications, and one oral medication that was kind of gaining steam uh, in the dry eye disease community was Lyrica, but we tried Lyrica and it didn't work. So what I decided to do uh, for this prospective paper was take um, 20 dry eye patients with pain and split them up and one group got Lyrica and which really I knew didn't work very well from experience and one group that got LDN where I saw that these patients uh, did very well. 
So uh, 10 patients in each group, uh, and they got, in my group of LDN, they got five milligrams, uh, 30 days um, and in the Lyrica group. And what we found was the ones that responded, which is about 50% um, of patients, really responded very well and had a decreased pain on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being uh, the worst. It's very similar to the paper that was just recently uh, published. Uh, and then I also realized, so the patients that responded very well, they wanted to keep using it. And I found, and this was a, and now it's been um, uh, supplemented with a paper in the um, recently, well not recently, 2017, where patients who are put on LDN, that effect lasts for quite a while. And what we realized is that these patients didn't have to be on an everyday medication, that we could actually taper them down to twice uh, a week of LDN, uh, and that worked. So the paper I'm referring to is Parkitney, Parkitty, uh, where he found that one month after discontinuation of LDN, doses of 4.5 milligram showed a continued reduction in uh, numerous pro-inflammatory mediators. And the mediator that we're very interested in is interleukin-17, which we found is um, very specific for dry eye. And um, if you look at it, uh, interleukin-17 is made by T cells. T cells make T helper cells, and T helper 17 makes interleukin-17. Uh, if you look at all of the medications that have been tried in terms of drops, uh, the immunomodulators, the only ones that have really worked are uh, the ones that are T cell immunomodulators because they decrease uh, interleukin 17. So if you look at cyclosporin with Restasis and Sequa, or if you look, or Icurvis, since this is a European meeting, or you look at uh, Zydra, which is Lofitograss, these are all T cell immunomodulators. The other ones have not uh, passed mustard and have not gotten FDA approval. So with this, this kind of proves what I've been doing is that uh, once you get them on a loading dose, just keeping them on uh, for at least uh, twice a week, you can keep the good anti-inflammatory uh, mediators there and uh, keep the effect of decreasing uh, pain on the cornea. So interleukin-17 is uh, being studied a lot. It's uh, one of the big inflammatory mediators in rheumatoid, MS, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. And this is why LDN is being used in this patient uh, population. If you want to see a good paper on kind of a review of these immuno, uh, these inflammatory cytokines, uh, the person that's done the most work on this is Dr. Savoda in Japan and kind of uh, tells you about this T cell, T helper cell, uh, interleukin-17, and how the immune system kind of interacts uh, when we talk about dry eye disease. DED patients have an increase in interleukin-17 in their tear film. That's, I think it's the most specific uh, inflammatory media that you're gonna find. That's why and we've been doing a lot of studies looking at the effects of the things that we're doing on interleukin-17, and we published a paper showing that actually uh, intense pulse light, which I'll talk about a little bit later, uh, decreases the amount of interleukin-17 on the tear film, and we showed that in a paper that we published in AJO. Parkini uh, study shows a reduction in this interleukin-17 with LDN, uh, and I think future uh, research should be on looking how LDN can decrease interleukin-17 on the tear foam. So there was a recent paper on low-dose naltrexone by Dykeman and their group at Tufts uh, looking at low-dose naltrexone uh, as an effective way of uh, and well tolerated for modulation of symptoms in patients with neuropathic corneal pain. This is actually uh, 
very similar to the study I did in 2000, 2013, but it just kind of shows you when I tried to get this published, uh, there was a lot of hesitancy uh, because just like there was with IPL because uh, doctors uh, didn't understand it. One, they didn't understand the whole pathogenesis of uh, dry eye and the biochemistry of dry eye or dry eye itself and uh, some of these treatments like intense pulse light, low dose naltrexone, platelet-rich plasma that I was championing out there uh, was kind of looked at as way out the box and they couldn't understand it. So, but this paper that was published, it was a 30 patient chart review, 16 patients had 50% or greater reduction in pain. This is basically what I saw. Uh, they looked at other things like increased enjoyment of, in life, and that was um, helped with LDN. And the patients felt like they had to think about their eyes a lot less, and that kind of goes into this, if you're uh, chronic pain, if you find something that decreases the pain, then you're not thinking about your pain so much. And it will in boost uh, your euphoria and get you out of your depression and other things. So LDN uh, works in, in many ways for the chronic dry eye patient. So in our experience, uh, so I have over 10 years of experience uh, with LDN for DED. I have hundreds of patients uh, that have uh, used this. I find that doses less than 3.0 milligrams does not demonstrate any effect in dry eye patients. So I've got a lot of patients that will contact me about getting on LDN and I'm uh, very happy to help them, but they've read a lot of things on the internet where you know uh, it starts out with a 1.5 and then they, they bring themselves up. So I'm no longer going to fight that. If they wanna start with lower doses and work their way up, that's uh, fine, but you have to, if a patient wants to start on 1.5 and work their way up, 1.0 doesn't do anything. There's nothing in the literature uh, showing that. But if they want to start at 1.5, you got to tell them that uh, in this loading uh, dose at 1.5, they may not feel any of the good effects of the LDN, and they're going to have to continue to increase the dosage. So maybe go from 1.5 to 3.0 and then 3.0 to 4.5 or 5 uh, milligrams. What I found is if a patient's a responder and you got a 50-50 chance of that, they're not going to respond a little bit, they're actually going to respond a lot. If they respond just a little bit, then maybe you have to increase the dose and that will give that greater uh, response. Once you do the loading dose in your system, then you can start tapering down. So once you figure out what is the dose, whether it's going to be 3.5 or 4.5 or 5, uh, once they do 30 days of that, then you can start tapering down to finally you get twice a week. So I'll tell you in my experience, I take LDN. I started myself on um, 5 milligrams for 30 days. I take it for inflammation in my knees and shoulder from old sports injuries. So I did it 30 days, it worked great. Um, and then I went from uh, every day for 30 days to twice a week and I kept the same anti-inflammatory effects. It's been great because I've gotten off of non-steroidals. Uh, it helps in my workouts to decrease inflammation and uh, definitely uh, decreases the inflammation in my knees and shoulder and I, I feel great on it. Important fact is you got to use a reputable compounding uh, pharmacy. So the LDN is a compounded uh, medication. And what I found, and I've had a lot of patients that will get LDN from my recommended pharmacies, and then they'll go on the internet and they'll say, oh, well, I can get it so much cheaper online from this pharmacy. And then they do that and they don't have the same effect. And I think what happens is other pharmacies can put uh, different fillers or more fillers. They can get the dosage incorrect. So if the patient has a reputable compounding pharmacy they want to use, then that's fine. But uh, that's very important. 
side effects. The biggest side effect is vivid dreams. Um, so the way to counteract that is I have my patients take LDN with food in the morning, and that's how I have them take all of the, the different things uh, that I recommend, like NAD, astragalus, um, uh, their omega-3, uh, vitamin D, vitamin C. Uh, these are all things I recommend. I also recommend uh, B12 shots uh, for my dry eye patients. Um, but I found with all of these uh, supplements and medications, taking it with food and taking it in the morning is the most important. Uh, if there, I've, I've had some patients who have reported some stomach may, things like uh, constipation, but again, uh, once you get them off their loading dose, the vivid dreams, the stomach irritation, anything that they're complaining about really uh, goes away. Um, and that's the great thing about it. So uh, how am I dosing LDN? So again, like I said before, I've got a lot of patients that have done a lot of research on LDN and they want to do the uh, taper up dosing. I prefer myself is to uh, do the 30 days of high dosing and tapering you down, but I'm not fighting anymore. If a patient wants to do the loading dose, I'll do two weeks of 1.5 milligrams, then two weeks of 3.0 milligrams, and then two weeks of 4.5 milligrams. And then if it's working for them, if, uh, if they were feeling the same way on the 3.0 to the 4.5, then you can go to the 3.0 for 30 days, and then you can taper down. Or if they say, I felt better on 4.5 than 3.0, then we go 4.5, uh, for 30 days and then we taper down. So you could do the taper in, in two ways. You can just go straight to twice a week or you can tell them take it four times a week then three times a week and then go down to the two times a week and then they stay on LDN uh, uh, twice uh, a week and those patients do very very well. So in conclusion, as I demonstrated over 10 years ago, LDN can be a great option for your patients for dry eye disease and pain. We now know that there's a big anti-inflammatory uh, effect and a big mood enlightening effect with the LDN. So it's, it's ticking off a lot of boxes when we're talking about our dry eye patients. And then we just need to do future studies on uh, inflammatory mediators on the eye uh, and LDN. But this is a great option uh, for your patients. We, we uh, rely on it and we've got a lot of experience and I can tell you that uh, if your patients react to it, uh, it's going to be a great addition to anything else that you're doing for them like, like IPL. Thank you very much. I'll go ahead and uh, take questions now.